Uh, today I'm going to talk you through how to do a filling. Um, uh, I'm going to try and cover as many steps as I can. Obviously we're limited with time, but I will do my best. Um, um, so once you've decided uh, with the patient what type of filling and which tooth you're going to fill and you've decided MO, MOD, you've looked at the x-ray and you've confirmed the fees, then um, you will, um, if you're doing composite, then obviously you need to isolate um, and you can be using a rubber dam. Um, a rubber dam to isolate the tooth because composite's quite sensitive to um, saliva. So um, with, with the rubber dam, I normally try, uh, draw an oval shape like that, uh, draw a cross around it, and then for whichever tooth I'm working on, I'll just make a little dot. So if this is lower left six, um, then um, I'll make a little mark here, and then I'll punch a hole in there and then uh, put the clamp on the tooth and then feed the uh, rubber dam over it. Sometimes um, I tend to use Optrogate, um, which is a very uh, nice um, retractor to use because it also helps the nurse to see where they're suctioning, especially if you're working on lower teeth. Um, after you've done your isolation in whatever method you want, then you have to obviously start preparing the cavity. Um, I tend to use um, this kind of a burr, which is a Diablo diamond burr, which is end cutting. Uh, sometimes when the um, when it's a very small cavity, um, I tend to use a very small diamond burr. So for instance, if it's a DO or a MO and there's risk of trauma to the adjacent teeth, I tend to use a very small uh, burr like this. Um, and also if I'm using, if I'm taking out a big amalgam filling out, I tend to use that, make a big uh, plus sign inside the filling and then flick out the amalgam. So um, these are this wide range of burrs. Uh, some people have been trained to use 330 toxin carbide burrs, so that's another one you could use. Once the cavity is prepared um, to whatever type of filling you've decided to do, whether you've decided to do amalgam, uh, composite, GIC, whatever you're deciding to fill the tooth with, then obviously you've got to go through the stages of, uh, of, of doing the restoration. So what I tend to do is, uh, if it's doing composite, then I would, um, etch the cavity uh, with 38% um, uh, orthophosphoric acid for 10 seconds, wash with water and air and dry but don't desiccate, desiccate means don't over dry your enamel, uh, then um, shake the bond um, and then get your nurse to drop it on your uh, brush like this, uh, don't put the bond into a container or a Dappen's dish uh, put it directly onto your brush because it can contaminate. You want to reduce the risk of contamination of your cavity because it's going to affect your bonding um, at the end of the day and affect your success of your filling. Um, after that is done, um, I tend to put the um, matrix on. Now, whether I use Sigvalent matrix um, and secure it with a wedge, with a, with a um, wooden wedge, to prevent um, any um, flow of the composite in the interprox area and getting overhangs. Or uh, these days, uh, everybody is very familiar with sectional matrix, which we call Palodent. And Palodent system is a very useful system, um, which we tend to use. Very simple to use. Um, you get your uh, Palodent matrix, you um, put it uh, between the teeth, then you get your wedge, um, feed the wedge in between the teeth like that, um, and then um, you get your ring and you put your ring over the tooth like so. This is plastic teeth so it just it would wedge it apart but obviously yours won't. And then um, once that's done, obviously you get a much better contact point uh, between the teeth. Um, so that is a Paladent system. Once your matrix band is on, then you um, then um, I tend to use SDR, which is Smart Dentin Replacement. Um, it comes with capsules like this, um, quite thin at the end, and easy to fill up uh, boxes. Um, so you tend to put this at the base of the box like so and then backfill upwards up to you can backfill up to four millimeters and then light cure it for 20 seconds um, you could um, 
then reassess it to see if you need to do any more uh, SDR or bulk fill composite. Once that's done, then um, you can use a nano hybrid composite um, in, uh, over the top of the SDR. And um, I, we tend to use Venus in the practice, uh, Venus Pearl, which comes in different shades. Uh, but my other favorite uh, composites are um, Admira Fusion, um, which is organically modified ceramic and Filtech Supreme are also one of my favorites and um, composites by Colteen. Uh, but obviously it depends um, where you're going to use it anterior or posterior. Uh, once um, the uh, restoration is completed, you've light cured it, uh, take the band off, light cure the interprox areas um, as well, uh, because obviously if your band's covering it, it, ha it hasn't been light cured, so light cure them 40 seconds each side. Uh, once that's done, um, then you can then polish your filling. I tend to use white stones. Um, so the pear shaped white stone, the flame shaped white stone to produce some anatomy uh, on, the, on the white filling. Uh, once you've polished it, then you can use um, the articulating paper. Now this articulating paper is only eight micron thick. I see that a lot of people tend to use this kind of articulating paper. This is 40 microns thick. This is very thick. This will cause interferences um, um, and this is not the correct thickness to use. So um, this is better for dentures, uh, obviously. This is designed for dentures. So you need to invest in some way thin articulating paper. And then once um, that um, restoration is done, then you take the rubber dam off, you take the optrogator, whatever you've used, and then get the patient to bite down and ask the patient if they feel that the filling feels all right or not. Um, so um, if you were to use any other different material, then say for instance amalgam, um, you cut your, you do your cavity preparation for amalgam. You need to have retention um, for it, and you need to have the dovetail to prevent uh, a resist for a resistance form. And then your nurse can mix your amalgam, and then you can pack it into the cavity, and then burnish it and carve it. Um, however, just uh, make sure that you don't use amalgam on um, pregnant ladies and children under the age of 15, according to Minamoro uh, policy, which came out quite recently in July 2018. Um, uh, also, afterwards, always give uh, post-operative instructions regarding local anesthetic to your patient. Thank you.